leaving Fantasy Island would prove to be the push of the first domino in his teetering career. Herve, having blown through his Fantasy Island cash faster than a mouse through cheese, would find himself short of money and big on assets. He would eventually sell his power ranch in the valley and move into a less than reputable rent house in North Hollywood. His collapsing career and deteriorating health would eventually force Herve to explore life with a bottle. It was reported that he would often consume two bottles of wine in a single night. While not that unusual for average-sized humans, one must remember that Herve tipped the scales at a scant 90 pounds. A series of phone calls in 1984 would lead to another act of violence by Herve. Assuming the caller to be a rival suitor for the affection of his girlfriend, Herve would eventually purchase a handgun. On one particular night, following another two-bottle bender, Herve became enraged, brandished his shiny new piece, and threatened to shoot it. It would take several friends and family members to eventually calm him down. By late 1986, Herve had torn through the better part of his $3.6 million that he earned from Fantasy Island. He was now earning a meager $500 per week. 1990 would find Herve's medical condition worsening. In increasing pain from internal organs that were too large for his body, Herv was taking upwards of 20 pills a day to alleviate the symptoms. He realized that his body was beginning to shut down and found himself fending off frequent bouts of depression. In 1983 Herv's luck would turn a bit towards the better. He found work in several TV commercials including a Dunkin' Donuts spot that, despite his wishes to distance himself from his tattoo days, would find him asking for, Deplane, Deplane, Donut. On September 3rd, Herv, accompanied by his significant other Catherine Self, would attend a screening of The Fugitive at the Directors Guild Theater in Hollywood. They would later enjoy a dinner at a restaurant near their home at 11537 Killian Drive. In the early morning hours of September 4, 1993 his common-law wife, even though she didn't live in the same house, would find his body. It seems Herve had written a suicide note grabbed his tape recorder and proceeded to his cluttered backyard. He turned on a tape recorder and spoke into the microphone, Kathy, I can't live like this anymore. I've always been a proud man and always wanted to make you proud of me. You know you made me feel like a giant and that's how I want you to remember me. After a bit more rambling he said, I'm doing what I have to do. I want everything to go to Kathy. I want everyone to know that I love them. In a sitting position, Herve leaned back against the sliding glass patio door asterisk, placed a pillow against his chest, and fired the pistol into the pillow. The bullet would travel through Herve's chest shattering the glass door, pass through a kitchen cabinet and eventually end up lodged in a wall. The tape recorder caught the sound of Herve cocking the pistol just before the deadly shots rang out. As he lay slumped against the glass door he mumbled, It hurts, it hurts. I'm dying. I'm dying. Kathy immediately rushed Herve to the medical center of North Hollywood. At 3.40 in the afternoon, Herve Alekes was declared deceased by the attending doctors. His worsening medical condition forced Herve to see death as a better option than enduring the severe pain. He was 50 years old. Herve's body was cremated and the ashes scattered at sea, off Point Fermin, California. Ricardo Montalban, his co-star for many years on the cast of Fantasy Island, would issue the following statement upon hearing the news of Herve's death. I considered his contribution to Fantasy Island one of the keys to the tremendous success that the show enjoyed.